Brush selection can be confusing for even the most accomplished artist. Brushes come in a bewildering array of sizes and styles. There are some 14 different head shapes alone. And most are available in a variety of fibers, including natural, synthetic, and blends. How then do you decide on the right combination? To select the best brush for your purpose, it is helpful to first understand the basic history and manufacturing process of brushes. Wendell Upchurch, Manager of Educational and Technical Services for Windsor & Newton. Earliest brushes were uh, made from crude fibers or sticks which had been worn into a braided hair-like tip, uh, allowed the cave artist to uh, pick up a load of paint and carry it to the wall. As painting developed, better tools were needed, and as uh, art and ideas became more focused and, and clear and directed, better tools were required in order to uh, deliver to the surface that the artist was painting on the exact concepts that were in the mind. So the brush is really an extension of the mind and of the ultimately the artist's body and hand. From the caveman's stick, brushes developed into more sophisticated instruments that utilized bird quills to hold hairs in place on the end of a stick. Although some of the materials have changed, the basic process has not. At Windsor & Newton, fine brushes are still made by hand. The finest watercolor brushes are made from the tail hairs of the Kalinsky sable, a species of mink found in Russia and China. After cleaning and grading, tails are passed to the dressers and brush makers, who are artists in their own right. All the hair from the tail is used for making the brushes, except the tip, which is usually badly worn and weak. The woolly underfur is also discarded. The hair is carefully graded by length and quality and then sterilized again before a further dressing. Every good hair ends in a point, so the damaged hairs, called blunts, have to be removed. No good hairs go to waste. A bundle of loose hairs can be sorted by a skilled dresser. By this method, the points have been rearranged to face in the same direction. Once dressed, the hair is passed to the brush makers. They serve a long apprenticeship before they can make the fine series seven brushes. For each brush, hairs of two or more lengths are selected. The doming of the brushes is done by a skillful twist of the fingers. This gives the exact shape and point. Once the brush is made, it is glued in the ferrule and the handle is attached. Finally, every detail is thoroughly inspected before packing. The Series 7 range was named after the number 7 brushes 
specially made by Windsor and Newton by command of Queen Victoria in 1866. All brushes consist of three parts. Most handles are fashioned from seasoned hardwood dowels to create a shape which takes into account the weight and length necessary for ideal balance. Long-handled brushes will mostly be used for oil, alkyd, and acrylic painting. Shorter handles are for watercolors and detail work in oils and alkyds. There are many varieties of hardwood. Uh, many come from the Orient as well as Scandinavia. The selection of a wood really depends upon how fine the grain is, which will allow it to um, hold its shape, be worked on a uh, lathe or a sander in order to shape it to the proper shape for fitting the hand. So a fine grain wood is necessary for that, as well as hard. Handles receive two coats of varnish to resist cracking and maintain their fine appearance and feel over a long life. A good ferrule is critical to brush performance and brush life. We carefully select our ferrules so that they will never split, rust, or stain. The best material is seamless cupro-nickel, but nickel-plated brass and stainless steel are also available. Fibers are first hand-tied, then cemented into the ferrule before being crimped onto the handle. Fashioning the finest brush heads is an art in itself. It calls for a detailed understanding of the quality of the fibers so that they can be bound according to their natural properties and so retain their shape over a long life. Brush heads can be made from natural or synthetic hair, or a blend of both. Natural hair includes Kolinsky, ox, squirrel, pony, goat, and hog. The advantages of natural hair includes the taper and fine point of each hair, and its color holding capacity. But it can be easily damaged by physical and chemical abuse, and the best quality can be expensive. Synthetic fiber mimics natural hair in performance and color. It has the advantages of durability, ease of cleaning, and lower cost. However, it lacks the fine point of natural hair and holds less color. A blend of natural and synthetic hair offers the best aspects of both types. Winsor Newton was the first to develop uh, with its scepter brush, which has now been re-engineered and uh, developed into the scepter gold, the first blend of sable with the sable substitute uh, synthetic filament. Utilizing then a mixture of a percentage of sable with a greater percentage of normally in each brush two different sizes of synthetic filaments uh, in order to balance the spring characteristics of the brush, utilizing then for strength and wear and spring the synthetic mixture and the natural hair for its pointing characteristics as well as, as its ability to uh, carry great loads of uh, water and color to the surface in a more effective way than the synthetic alone. The two critical components of a brush's performance are the quality of the fibers in the brush head and the shape of the brush head itself. Most shapes of brush heads are broadly suggestive of the likely use, but there are finer aspects to consider when making your choice such as color holding capacity. A short flat brush head, for example, will hold considerably less of the chosen painting medium than a longer rounded brush head. Traditionally, the most common 
is the round shape. It is immensely versatile in that it can trace the finest of lines. Yet, because it has a full body, it can also carry a lot of color to the surface. Particularly true for watercolors. The flat wash is ideal for covering large areas with fluid washes. While the mop has been designed for moistening paper or laying down large areas of color. Brush head shapes for thick bodied paints like oils, alkyds, and even acrylics include the round and four other key types. Flat, short flat or bright, filbert, and fan. Flat brushes are longer out of the ferrule, more flexible, and will impart a softer, more subtle brush stroke. Bright brushes have a stiffer feel to them and are useful for cutting in bold dashes of color and for firm, short, decisive brush strokes. Filbert heads combine the qualities of round and flat brush shapes, providing the ability to make detail strokes and a firm, angular edge for stronger work. Fan brushes are useful for conveying highlights in portraiture for soft blending techniques and the broken color effect when applying foliage to trees and brushes in landscapes. The size of a brush uh, is determined, of course, by the scale at which the artist wishes to work. Many artists uh, when they're purchasing brushes are confused by the sizing of brushes. By that, I mean the actual calibrated measures of the width and length and so forth. Here I have uh, a bristle brush, which is a uh, size 16 and what's referred to as uh, a bristle size, and a size 16 in what is referred to as a sable size. Notice the extreme difference. So bristle sizes run much larger. Uh, there are a number of different scales for uh, bristle as well as sable. Uh, these are English sizes, of course, but there are other European sizes as, we're, as well as oriental sizes in brushes. The type of paint has a great influence on the selection of appropriate brushes. Universally, brushes made from soft hair, not bristle, are most suitable for watercolor. Kolinsky sable is considered to be supreme. The reason for its excellence lies in the anatomy of the individual hair. A fine, needle-like point tapering from a thicker belly, giving it great spring and resilience. Its surface is covered by tiny scales that serve to trap a reservoir of color. The rising cost of Kolinsky has led to the search for alternatives, hence the variety of synthetic brushes now available. These range from pure synthetics, like Winsor & Newton Cotman brushes, to skillful blends of sable and synthetic, like Scepter Gold. The brush most preferred by watercolorist is normally the round sable, certainly much less expensive, but a good alternative would be a dyed synthetic. This is the Cotman, round, and of course it does many of the, the same things, but it will not carry as much water as the sable. So it delivers good sharp point, and of course can be used for broader application as well. This is surface dyed. The surface dyeing with an acidic dye helps to pit the surface in the process of developing a color that makes it look like uh, sable. Uh, in the pitting at a microscopic level you begin to develop more surface area making this brush 
able to pick up and carry more uh, color than just a slick filament uh, undyed brush. Generally, hog bristle brushes are most commonly used for oil colors. The spring and resilience of the fibers is highly suited to the application of full-bodied paints to relatively coarse surfaces, such as canvas, especially in the early stages of painting. Bristle holds its shape extremely well. Each bristle has a natural curve, and immense care is taken to ensure that the bristles are arranged so that this curve faces inwards towards the center of the working edge. It has a split tip, known as a flag, which increases color carrying capacity and also provides a soft feel to the end of an otherwise stiff brush head. There are many varieties of bristle. Uh, some may be gray and have as many as seven to nine flags which come off. Uh, they favor uh, the Chungking type bristle, which is white, springy, and strong. The benefit of a, a bristle brush with the flag, it's strong. The flagging helps to interlock the bristle, helping it hold its shape, but also provides uh, more surface area than a single strand of hair. And so a bristle brush will actually pick up and carry much more paint to the surface than will a sable. Acrylic paint lends itself to a wide variety of uses, and so to a wide spectrum of possible brushes. When used in a textured way, not dissimilar to oils and alkyds, the quality of hog bristle brushes is ideal. Equally, when applied in thin transparent layers like watercolor, the quality of finer fibers like sables or synthetics is required. Many artists find that the inherent quality of the new generation of smooth-sided synthetic fibers is ideal. For the artist that is uh, selecting uh, brushes for acrylic paints, there are a number of different types of brushes available. To start a, uh, an acrylic painting, we have, <clears throat> depending on how you intend to work, uh, the University Gold, which would be more like a bristle brush. The reason we're recommending the use of uh, synthetic filament for acrylic painting is the acrylic paints contain an alkali, ammonia, which deteriorates hog bristle and natural hair and uh, basically brings about uh, breakage of the hair. So the synthetic filaments are resistant to that chemistry found in acrylic paints. This is the university brush, which has been around for a longer period of time. It has bright, round, and flat, and a fan. Uh, this is a softer filament, lacks the strength and driving power of the university gold. So if you were working with a slightly more thin or more fluid consistency paint, you might consider starting your work with the university brush. But if you're using uh, a heavier paste or working with a gel, I think you'd find that the university gold would be uh, the most powerful and uh, able to uh, push heavier paint and will withstand a great deal of scrubbing. For artists who use acrylic colors in a watercolor technique, synthetic brushes or blends such as Cotman or Scepter Gold are suitable. Finally, the most important factor in brush selection may be the personal preference of the artist. Almost every kind of brush can have a role to play in the application of all these paints. 
Brushes are, are tools for delivering different kinds of marks, making different types of strokes, applying paints of different thicknesses and viscosities. Um, so it's really up to the artist to determine what tool will best serve the purpose of what they're trying to achieve. By following these simple routines, your brushes should repay your investment with years of service. Always clean your brushes immediately after use. Remove any paint from both the fibers and the ferrule. Never leave brushes resting on their bristles or hair. Never leave bristles or hair submerged or soaking in water, as moisture can enter the handle and crack the wood. Shape up the hairs after cleaning. Rest the brush in a pot or jar, head uppermost, free from contact with any surface. If storing brushes for any length of time, protect them from moths and make sure they are clean and perfectly dry to prevent mildew. Cleaning methods will vary, of course, depending on the medium. For watercolors, gently rub the wet brush head on a cake of ordinary household soap. Work up a lather in the palm of your hand and rinse the brush in cool water. Do this until there is no trace of color in the lather. Rinse to remove all traces of soap. Shape by hand. For oils and alkyd, follow the same procedure as for watercolor. First, rinsing your brush in white or mineral spirits to remove surface paint. Shake the spirits from the brush and rinse under cool running water. You can also use Windsor & Newton art gel. Simply rub art gel into the brush until all color has been loosened. Rinse in cool water and shape by hand. For acrylics, never let acrylic paint dry on the brush. Brushes must always be thoroughly washed with cool water immediately after use. Follow the procedure for watercolor or substitute art gel for soap. Never use hot water as it may make the paint coagulate. Never use detergent instead of soap. For synthetic brushes. Synthetic fibers require similar care to natural hair. Follow the recommended procedure for the painting medium used. Should the brush lose its shape, simply soak the brush in hand hot water for one to two minutes. Shape up the brush and store in a pot or jar, fibers uppermost. Every Windsor & Newton brush, partly by tradition, partly by design, has been developed to meet the individual needs and styles of many different artists. Only trial and experience can determine which brush is right for you. But whatever your choice, you can always be sure of the unmatched quality and value of Windsor & Newton brushes.